Hi, and welcome to Epic Restorations. Today, we're working on removing the hinge pins and the doors from our 1930 Ford Model A. We're restoring our Tudor sedan, so that means we have two doors and six hinge pins to remove. Depending on the condition of a car, these pins can be a real pain. Because we anticipated this, we've been spraying the pins with a little penetrating oil a few times per week for the past several months. Well, the day of reckoning has finally arrived, so we'll see if they pop right out or if we have to put a little more work into them. Either way, let's get to the barn and let's get to work. If you ask a group of guys about the best way to remove hinge pins from the doors of a Model A, you're bound to get a lot of different answers. Some guys will cut the top off the pin, drill the pins out on both ends, and drive what's left out with a punch. Other guys suggest one of the hinge pin removal tools that the Model A vendors sell. Many others suggest heating the hinge cherry red and then punching them straight out. And still others prefer an air chisel. Before it was all said and done, we needed a few of these options to push our pins out. A friend from our local club loaned us his Bob Drake TL100 door hinge pin removal tool. This hinge pin puller is a pretty simple tool. The tool itself is forged steel with a heat treated bolt. The tool also includes a few different sized pin pushers. It's important that your push pins are no bigger than 7 seconds of an inch or they won't fit into the door hinge holes. If you choose to go this route, check with the vendor selling them to be sure they include the correct size push pins. So to get this started today, we're gonna to begin with the lower hinge pin. If you're somebody who hasn't been hitting your hinge pins with PB Blaster for a few months, it's recommended that you try to use a penetrating oil on the hinge pins for a day or two prior to removal to help loosen things up a bit and work through the gunk that's built up over several years. If it's a truly troublesome pin, you may have to apply a little heat as well. When attaching the hinge pin puller, you want to make sure to center the hardened pins squarely on the bottom of the hinge pin itself. If the pin is set at an angle, you run the risk of snapping it right off and then the tool is useless. We started with the shortest pin and worked it up carefully using a three quarter inch socket and ratchet. As squarely as possible, tighten up the bolt, getting a bit of weight on it. Be careful and don't over tighten the bolt so far that you crack the pins or bend anything. Just snug is good. As you tighten the bolt, the hinge pin should begin to come up. Continue to slowly tighten the bolt until you're about out of thread. Once you're as far as the starter pin can go, loosen up the bolt and take it all the way out. Then pull out the pin. Next, move to the middle sized pin, reattach the bolt and repeat the process just like before. The tool does like to shift and walk on you, so it can be frustrating at times as you may have to set and reset again and again. Once you've pushed the hinge pin up past its splines, you should be able to use a punch to push it out the rest of the way. All in all, we successfully removed three of our hinge pins using this tool. The other three required a different approach. The 
final three hinges required a lot of heat. Using two yellow propane torches, we heated the door hinges until they were cherry red hot. Then, using a hammer and a punch, we slowly, and I mean slowly, worked the hinge pins up and out of the holes. This takes a lot of time and patience, especially at first. Once the pin begins to move up through the hinge, the punch more easily follows through the hole and the process speeds up. 90% of the effort is just getting the pin started due to the difficult angle you have working on it. Patience and perseverance is key. Now that the doors are off the car, we can turn our attention to removing the vinyl top, the gas tank, the fenders, and eventually the body itself. Join us next time as we continue to chip away at this project and get one step closer to restoring this 1930 Ford Model A on the next episode of Epic Restorations. <laughs>